Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Andrew with another video from the Options Millionaire Educational Series. So I've been doing some research. I've been scrolling through all the videos on YouTube, all the popular videos, all the non-popular videos, all the different influencers out there that do trading. And there's a crap ton of clickbait out there, man. There's a bunch of clickbait. How to turn a hundred bucks into a million. How I became a millionaire in two weeks with Robinhood. How I became a millionaire scalping options. Most of it out there is absolute clickbait. You know why it's clickbait? Because all of these videos that have all these crazy titles and the shocked face thumbnails, they have millions and millions of views, and yet most people are losing money. So why is it that all these so-called influencers out there are posting videos of these crazy, crazy, crazy returns, these 10,000% account returns, and everyone's watching these videos, and yet nobody can make money since i've been running this options millionaire community for the past five or six years i get a lot of common questions and most of the time the answers to their problems are their emotions however with all the videos out there promising illusions of grandeur and riches and fame of all these different traders who come to the market people expect to take a 100 bucks or they take their expect their lunch money or their account money or their grandma's inheritance money put it in the market and immediately make crazy crazy returns when it's absolutely not the case every single person i've talked to has blown up an account including myself every single successful trader every six every single unsuccessful trader has blown up accounts this is not an easy racket it's just not the good news is is that anyone can actually become successful doing this all you have to start doing is actually acting like a professional you have to respect the market. And there's a few things along the way that we can learn. And that's what the purpose of this video is. How to win at options trading. So in the past 10 years of my investing career, I have read a lot of books. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've read a lot of articles, asked a lot of questions, talked to a lot of people in investing in my ever increasing effort to sharpen the X. I'm always looking to gain the edge, just like we all are. Every single thing I've read that has actually helped me comes down to one fact who I am as a trader. The most amazing thing and the most amazing revelation I've had in running this community with 11,000 plus people in the Discord at the moment is that one fact. Because every time people come to me for questions after some heartbreaks, after a big loss, I ask them question after question after question in the hopes of dialing down an answer to give them something to help them. And it always, always comes back to, you made an emotional decision. So I'm gonna go over a bunch of questions and give you the answers to them in an effort to make you a better options trader. So let's go ahead and get started here. One of the first and most prevalent questions I get is should I average down? And the answer is no. Why shouldn't I average down? If I buy here and I double, so why shouldn't I average down? If I double down right here and the price goes up, I only need to get half of the target price I needed in order to break even. If you take an option, and that option immediately goes down 20, 30%, you most likely have made an incorrect entry. So your emotions start kicking into play. You start to feel the twinge of that big red number getting bigger and bigger on your portfolio. You start to watch and you're like, man, this can't possibly keep going red. Why does this continue to go red? It's impossible for this to keep going down. Why did I have to buy right there? Why couldn't I buy just 30 more seconds, 30 seconds later or five minutes later? Why did I have to buy a put right before it rebounded? So your emotions start to wreak havoc on you. And then you think, okay, well, I'll just double down right here. And now this price only needs to go up half as much for me to break even on this option. Well, that's not necessarily true. Sure, you may get lucky sometimes, but the vast majority, because of statistics, if you go down that much, you're, you will be entering a losing position and doubling down into a losing position. You have to remember that we're options traders. One of the biggest obstacle and the biggest difference between options traders and stock traders is time value. Stock traders do not have to fight time. They can buy a stock. If the price goes down, they can hold it for three months. And as long as that price goes back up, they're going to make money. No big deal. As options traders, we do not get that luxury. We have to fight expirations. Not to mention the emotionality of it. If you most of the time, it's an emotional play. You're adding to a losing play, hoping that it's going to come back. You turn options trading into horse racing, where you're sitting there yelling at the screen, hoping it comes back. 
And now let's talk about your position sizing. Hopefully as a responsible trader, you are keeping track of your position sizes. And when you start doubling down and averaging down and averaging down, adding here, you start losing track of that. And now here you are, 10 minutes later after you've entered, you've added three more positions and now you've got a 60% position size on a losing position. And if that continues to fall, now you're going to take a colossal loss, further destroying your emotions, further destroying your portfolio. Which leads me to the second question, how big should my position sizes be? Very important question and probably the biggest reason why most traders destroy their accounts is because they overextend themselves. In this whole online investing community with Reddit of YOLOing, of trying to shoot the moon, trying to hit a home run, swing for the fences, we overextend ourselves and maybe we get lucky one, two, three times. But, but statistics say we will always come back down to zero. If you do 100% position size, one, two, three times in a row, four times in a row, five times in a row, and maybe you hit 20%, 30%, 10% each time, and that account gets bigger, and you turn $1,000 into $20,000. Let's say you do it. But then you have two losses in a row, maybe three losses in a row. Comes all the way back down. And then you keep hitting this cycle. You get confident because you get 10 wins in a row on 100% position size, and that count keeps bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you hit the reset button and bring it all the way back down. And then you do it again. And you're like, man, I'm going to hit it. And this time, I'm not going to take a loss. I'm going to cut that loss soon, and then we're going to have a big account. And then it grows 20,000, 20, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 1,000, 2,000, all the way back down. And it happens over and over again. And then each time you do it, that balance gets smaller and smaller. And in six months, you start out with a $1,000 account. Now you've got 50 bucks left. Your emotions are absolutely roasted because you're sitting here dealing with those oscillations, those crazy drawdowns every single time you overextend yourself. There's nothing good about using 100% position sizes. The market will always come get you. There's a reason why rich people don't use 100% position sizes. Warren Buffett, Michael Burry, all these famous traders. There's a reason why they do not use 100% position sizes. You have not unlocked Pandora's box by discovering 100% position sizes. You have not changed the game by discovering it. You have not figured out a new strategy because I guarantee you 100% of the time using 100% position sizes will smoke your account. Number three, should I set stop losses? Most definitely yes, especially if you are a new options trader. Because not only as a new trader are you learning your technical side of trading, you're learning how to control your emotions. And you say to yourself, yeah, when I see 10% loss, I'm cutting it baby. I'm cutting that baby loose. When I see 15% loss, 20% loss, when I think when I see things going against me, I'm cutting that loose for show. For show. But guess what? When you're in the heat of battle, when your feet are in the fire, when you start to feel the twinge of that loss getting bigger and bigger, all you can think about is, please, God, come back. Please let this go green. I, I promise I'll never do this. I'll never take a big position size again. Please let it come green. And you let it go. And before you know it, you keep doing these mental gymnastics of promises to whatever God you believe in, to praying that it comes back up, to hoping it comes back up, and it just trickles and trickles and trickles and trickles and trickles. It can't possibly have another red candle, right? And it doesn't. And then before you know it, you're at 40% loss and you've destroyed your account. So in order to protect yourself against that, in order to protect yourself against the unknown, because we as traders have to realize that we are never going to be right 100% of the time, that the market is going to be unpredictable. Otherwise, we'd all be sitting here on stacks of our $100 bills, just like Walter White in his storage shed with $38 million, having to spray it so silverfish don't eat his fish or eat his cash. We'd all be that if we knew how to predict this market, but the market is inherently unpredictable and we're going to take losses. So please use position size to protect yourself against downside. I promise you it'll help you in your emotions. It'll help your dot, your bottom line. Number four, why do I always lose on puts? I'm never taking puts again. That's what I hear all the time. Stonks only go up. Never bet against America. I hate puts. I managed to take a put right at the bottom. Puts are actually no more riskier than calls. The problem with puts is that it's usually an emotional play. SPY can't possibly continue to go up. We've gone up four days in a row. It's got to come down now. Look at the chart. There's a lot of green. It's just going up and up. It has to come down now. We take a put. And guess what? SPY just smiles at you and keep on climbing. The market just smiles at you, waves as it goes on by, and you end up losing money. Or you finally start to see some red and SPY is going, and the market is going down and down and down. And then you FOMO, you take a put, and then right when you take a put, it rebounds and starts climbing, and you lose. 
helping you control your emotions is actually doing your due diligence and learning the market, learning the technical side of things and learning levels. So you're not buying right in between a level where it's going to re resist, or you're not buying a put right at a support level where it's going to bounce. Knowing those things is going to help you be a better trader. So it's all about learning your system, learning the technical side of things, doing your work, and then controlling your emotions. But that is all I got for you all. Thank you for being here, for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's a couple, just a couple of questions that I get on the daily uh, running the Discord. And it's something I wanted to pass on to you so you can learn from their mistakes and learn from your mistakes and start to sharpen that axe. If you are new to this channel, please hit that like button. Subscribe. You get notifications for all my educational content as well as my Monday, Wednesday, Friday YouTube live streams where we live trade ETS in the futures uh, all, pretty much all morning long. If you haven't already, use the link in the description to come over and join the Discord. We have a fantastic educational-based community as well as the Patreon community, which we dive in every day. We share our supports and resistance. We share our plays and we share our educational content. It's a fantastic community based on learning, not on mimicking. Until next time, y'all, I will see you later. I'm out.